Hi everyone! Welcome to Dad Done Right. My name is Travis and thanks for stopping by today. Um, I'm hanging out with my son Oliver right now and he's playing with some toys. He's building some stuff and uh, he's having a lot of fun. So if you found this video, you're, you're probably somebody either searching for parenting tips or the topic of sleep when you have a new baby or you're already a subscriber and you're checking out my videos. If you're already a subscriber, that's awesome. I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you for being part of the Dad Done Right family. But if you're not a subscriber, I'd ask you to consider subscribing. We do weekly vlogs and as well as videos like this uh, and the vlogs are really awesome. It's just adventures of faith and fatherhood with my son Oliver. And uh, we'd ask you to consider subscribing and being part of the Dad Done Right family. So that being said, I'm going to give you my top five tips that I would give to somebody who either has a new baby or is a first time parent in the regards of sleep. One quick disclaimer is I don't claim to be um, a know-all parent who knows everything about everything. I'm just a guy who has been through it for the first time and these are some of the things that I've learned that I think could be of value to somebody else, especially if you're experiencing it for the first time. It can be a little bit scary. So I hope that these help you. Alright, so number one is sleep when your baby is sleeping. When you have a new baby, your baby is probably doing one of three things. Sleeping, eating, or pooping. Or maybe a combination of those three. But when your baby's awake, you need to tend to your baby's needs constantly. And then when your baby's asleep, and you have that moment of relaxation, it's important for you to catch some rest yourself. Because it's really tempting to be like, okay, my baby's asleep now. Now I can go and get things done. But that is a really surefire way of burning yourself out after a little while. It's important for you to catch your rest when your baby's resting. When you have a child, your life is changing and you're having to get acclimated to an entirely new lifestyle. And your body is like just physically and mentally exhausted. Yeah. 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 Exhausted. You're exhausted. <laughs> so when your baby goes to sleep, even if it's just for 15, 20 minutes, it's important for you to go and catch some Z's and get your rest. By getting your rest, you can be re-energized to help take care of your baby. Because guess what? That is the only thing that matters when you have a new baby. Taking care of that child. Everything else, forget about it. And I think this is a good segue into point number two, which is take naps with your baby. Now, I, I, there are people out there who would say, don't do that. I'm not one of those people. I mean, it's kind of, if you're somebody who rolls over on top of everything, then you know, you probably shouldn't do it. But even I was somebody who rolls over a lot and I was still able to like nuzzle my child in my arms on the couch and things in a rocking chair and and able to take naps without any worry that anything was going to happen to my child. I wouldn't recommend so much in a bed because like there's just too many directions to go and everything, but couches and chairs definitely a great idea. And I'm someone who personally believes like that your baby sleeps better when they're sleeping with you. There's this this um, bond forming and the warmth of your body against them and everything. It's just it's an incredible experience. All right, so number three, take shifts. If you've got parents in town, grandparents, family, take shifts with them. Don't be modest. Take as much help as you can possibly get in this situation. They are there for you to help you through this transition. Because after they leave, you're on your own. Whether you're a single parent or a family, you're on your own. But if there is no family available, it is still super important for you to take shifts. You'll get burnt out if you don't. And it's important that one person's resting when the baby's resting. And if there's someone else available to do other things around the house that you wanted to do, whether that be clean or cook or do something like that, let that person do that. But if you can both sleep, that's really good too. What are you doing? Look at this guy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Are you saying uh-oh? That's really cute. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hey, look at that. You guys are getting to see my son learn uh-oh for the first time. Uh-oh. Ah! 
Anyways, never get burnt out because you were too afraid to ask for help. It's important that you guys stay rested and ready to roll because kids are 24 7. Uh oh! <laughs> My son is determined to make sure that his voice is heard in this video. So, from the remainder of this video, I'm likely going to be talking over him. <laughs> So tip number four! In the beginning, everyone's going to tell you what to do, what worked for them, and kind of create this blanket of parenting that's supposed to be a one-size-fits-all. But the reality is that you need to kind of push that out. Because when you're first getting started, you've got to figure out what style of parenting works for you, and you need to figure out what kind of child you're dealing with. Because not every child sleeps the same, every child is completely unique, so you need to figure out what's going to work given your set of circumstances with your new baby. People will tell you not to create bad habits and that it's super important to get your child into a routine. I agree, don't create bad habits and get your child into a routine as soon as possible. But in the beginning, it's all about survival, man. So if that means you're not letting your kid cry because you don't want him to seem miserable or anything, or if, if that means that if you're, you're getting up and you're putting him in the car and driving around the block, if you're rocking him in a rocking chair, you're walking around the house, or cuddling with them on the couch to kind of console them and keep them comfortable, whatever gets that baby to sleep and works for you, all I can say is do it. All right, y'all, we made it to my fifth and final tip. So glad you all are still here. And this one is probably the most important thing of all. Number five, it's all about the mindset. It's really easy to get really like defeated and bogged down, even angry and frustrated when your kid's not sleeping, you're not getting a ton of rest. It's really easy to feel just defeated in those moments. You're gonna say, ugh, I'm so tired. Guess what? Welcome to parenting. So what do you do about that? You have to change your mindset. There's a really cool article that's called The Unexpected Gift of Fatherhood that really outlines this principle in really a nice perspective. And I'll link that down below. You should definitely check it out. It's a, a personal testimony from, from a father. The idea behind this is that you need to shift your perspective and your mindset to the point where when you wake up at four in the morning and your child is screaming, crying, and you need to go and get them, that it's important in those moments to find joy. Not be angry that you're not sleeping. Not be angry that your child woke you up. Gosh darn you, baby! Instead, find joy in getting to spend time with your little one. Yum. Yum. Thank you. Because if you're angry and you're frustrated, then you're going to have this resentment towards your children, which is not something anyone wants because that lingers and that can carry over into parenting. But if you can find joy in the opportunity to spend time with your little one, even if it's at four in the morning, even if you're really tired, you can form this just incredible bond with your child, whether that means just sitting on the couch, after you fed them and they just kind of stare into your eyes, asking them questions while they explore the world, just talking to them, whispering to them, reading to them. I remember in our first initial weeks when Oliver came home that we were taking shifts and I was out here with him and I was uh, rocking him in the rocking chair. Those were some of the most special moments that I can remember because I got to just look at him and stare into his eyes and just whisper to him how important and special he was and just how much God loves him and how much God has blessed our family with him and the things that I believe that he's going to do and how an amazing person he's going to become and just how much I love him. When you can have those moments to just bond with your children, even if it's at 4 a.m. and they have no idea what you're talking about. Those are some of the most special times. So my, my final words would just be to find joy, even in the hard times, even in the early morning, even in the crying and the screaming. Find joy with the opportunity to spend time with your little ones. Thanks for watching, guys. And if you like this video, 
Be sure to give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this and for more adventures of faith and fatherhood in our weekly vlogs. We hope to see you in the next video. Peace! Whoop-ha!